works. All right. Okay. Oh, nice. All right. Okay. So, what I'd like to start uh, by saying is, well, I think it goes without saying that everybody in their life has someone that they can label a role model, someone that they take influence from. You know, um, MLK, Oprah, Obama, um, <laughs> pretty much. Anybody, your parents. Um, you know, I think if you turned the question on me, though, I'd have quite a bit of a different answer, especially in my childhood. Um, when I was young, if you asked me who my role model was, I'd definitely say, boom, Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man was my, my guy. He was my role model pff, ages five to eight. Um, 2002, Tobey Maguire, the Sam Raimi action flick. Um, changed my life when I saw it. Um, there was just everything about it. I saw that movie and I wanted to be Spider-Man. Um, you know, we, in our house we had, we had an old flip cell phone that couldn't make calls or text messages, but it could make little audio recordings. And um, I would pop Spider-Man 2002 into the DVD player and hold up the cell phone and record the, the opening theme to the movie. And, um, Later on, I'd take the cell phone into my room and, and listen to that main theme on repeat in my bed when everybody else was asleep just because I wanted to feel that energy, that Danny Elfman, you know, orchestral theme. I wanted to, I envisioned myself as Spider-Man, um, you know, and I think that this, this was the first of many films that introduced the concept which has changed my life, and that is the concept of the superhero. So, at, oh, <laughs> as you can see, um, my, my TED talk is about superheroes, you know. Um, everybody so far has given some really deep and emotional talks, and here I am talking about a bunch of men in spandex. But I think that um, you'll see that there's a greater message here. Uh, superheroes have fueled my artistic and creative passions. I'd like to think that today I'm a quite creative person. All my life I've... I, I was the kid who drew in middle school. I liked to draw and, and make comics, and I, I wrote, and now I like to make films and screenplays. And that's all been driven, uh, that's all come from these, these characters. Um, it's, it led to the creation of a character who reflects this passion called Laser Boy, um, who is in the title of this TED Talk, but is a character that I'd like to get onto later. I think first I'd like to talk about the background, a little bit of context about superheroes because, I mean, they've been around forever, you know. Um, superheroes looked like this at one point. Um, Adam West, that was the first Batman. He actually just died. Um, it, they've been around for such a long time and, and that was the standard. Um, that's what superheroes looked like, you know. Um, They've definitely been exaggerated a lot more today, and I guess what I'm just trying to say is that they've been present forever, but what, what I've noticed, and the reason that it was called to my attention that I wanted to create this TED Talk is how powerful they are in today's society. Um, if you look at these two films, which came out this, this year, uh, Black Panther I think was February, and Avengers just came out last month. Um, Black Panther is a superhero film, and it's already third highest domestic grossing movie of all time. Domestic being the United States. That's insane numbers. I think the only two that are ahead of it are Titanic and Avatar, which are just colossal movies. So it really changed the course of cinema already. It's been out for a couple months, you know? And with Black Panther, you could make the case that, yes, it is a cultural phenomenon. It's the first significant black superhero. There's an all-star black cast, and it really kind of changed the roles of black people in cinema, and it really kind of empowered them. But if you look at the movie to the right, I mean, that's as nerdy as it gets. That's as superhero-y as a movie gets. Um, there's got to be like 20, you know, characters laden in metal and colorful spandexy outfits. Um, and that movie is on track to become number one highest domestic grossing movie of all time. 
So that was just this year, these two movies. Um, and that kind of called to my attention, um, I think there's a greater message here. Why are these movies doing so well? I know why I like them. I'm a nerd. I've always liked them. I liked them ever since Spider-Man. But why are they gaining such a high audience? Why are they so lucrative? Um, and so, <laughs> why are people dressing up like this? Why are people, you know, adult men and women dressing up like their favorite characters and giving up all dignity to go out in public and, and, and look like this? So, uh, it kind of led me to a bit of an investigation. <laughs> uh, and the first reason I think these movies are so attractive is a pretty basic reason that they're fun. They're very fun. Um, not only are they fun, they're repetitive. Uh, they've got essentially the same storyline over and over again, but you want to come every time. You want to go to the theater, you know, an unnecessarily attractive male or female gains some sort of weird superpower and or already has the power, you know. Um, an equally superpowered adversary appears, they punch each other around for two and a half hours, and then you get in the car and drive home and talk about the sequel that's going to come out in a year or so. And the cycle continues. That's me. I'm a consumer. I love these movies. Um, so that's pretty much the first reason. Um, and the second reason is that they're an escape. You know, just like any movie is, uh, superhero movies take you somewhere else. They take you to a more desirable world, I think. Um, especially with today's political climate and everything that's going on with the terrorism and North Korea and things that you really just don't want to hear about sometimes. You know, you see these banners on the news and, you know, every morning I, I look at the news. I'm eating cereal in the morning, getting ready to go to school, and there's just one thing after the next, and it's tiresome. And sometimes you just want to get away. Um, I think an example of um, a movie where this fails is th these, these recent movies. There was a movie, Batman vs. Superman, which came out a couple years ago, and it tanked. It, it, critics destroyed it, and I think one of the main reasons for that is because it placed these characters, Batman and Superman, these um, like loved characters in a world where it's kind of dark and cruel and it's too grounded in reality, and I think that's one of the reasons why that did poorly. So the fact that these movies can, can transport us somewhere else when we walk into that theater or pop that Spider-Man 2002 into the DVD player, they take us somewhere else. Um, and then the third reason I think these movies are important is it, it transcends the pretty obvious reasons that people know. Um, you know, you notice every time you go to a movie like this, if you watch these movies at all, if you've ever seen a movie like this with some sort of hero, what you notice is they'll make, this, these characters will make a lot of sacrifices for other people. And you'll see this and, and it gives you kind of a striking feeling. Why, you know, that Captain America just, I don't know, saved those people from that burning building, why did he do that? Um, and that kind of feeling that I get when I'm there, it's surprising. It's a surprising feeling, and I, I don't think it should be surprising, you know. Um, go, seeing people do acts of heroism and perform acts that are benevolent and saintly, why is that so treasured and rare, and why is that something that we push to seeing in movies, and something that we lack in society today? Um, superheroes, they set a precedent unseen today, and that's, I think they're a bit of a reminder of that. Um, so in that, they're also a solution. Superheroes show us that there is no Superman in this world, but there can be. People, in this world, there are people that should, let me rephrase this. There are people in the, this world that, that understand that they need to fulfill these roles, and those people are the superheroes. There is no Spider-Man. There is no man who can swing from a building with adhesive shooting from his wrists. It's not real. 
these movies remind us that there needs to be someone to fill that space, to fill that gap, and become the superheroes. So, <laughs> why me? Why me? Um, why am I giving this TED Talk? I mean, anybody could talk about superheroes. They're very popular in society. Um, they're big, they make tons of money, everybody sees them. But why am I talking about this? Well, I talked about a character earlier in this talk called Laser Boy. And so, who's Laser Boy? He's, the, he's in the title, he's, he's important. Who is he? Well, <laughs> this, this is Laser Boy. Um, this is a picture of the cover for Laser Boy and the Giant Robot, uh, published in about, at about uh, 2006. I was probably five years old when this became a New York Times bestseller. Um, this movie, uh, this book, I should say, um, was the first of many. It was an amalgamation of tons of characters. It was, it was my Spider-Man, but it was also, if you guys ever remember those Captain Underpants books, uh, that I used to read them a ton when I was a kid. So it was kind of a combination of these characters who were very heroic, but you know, I had added my own artistic flair. There's a, there's a pirate, I, I don't know. There's a talking spider on the bottom there. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of creative motives crashing around there, but um, Laser Boy evolved. Laser Boy was carried through most of my childhood. This is Laser Boy and the terrifying torture of the talking pterodactyls, because alliteration makes for a cool title. Um, you know, Laser Boy was, was present in a lot of my life. He was my Spider-Man. He was my superhero. Um, continued through all the way to, I think I stopped when I was about 10. Um, but Laser Boy was always there, always something I could come back to. It wasn't something that I just created and dropped. It was something that carried through, and I think there's something quite special there. Um, and Laser Boy gave me a superpower, and it's, it's cheesy, but it, it, it really did. It, it changed my life. The, the, the inspiration that these movies provided me with um, led to something a lot greater, something that I never would have accomplished today. I think um, they gave me a superpower. I've been shy, essentially, not as much today, but I've been shy most of my life. I was always the one that was kind of clenching the pant leg of the parent while she was talking to the the adults, I didn't really engage. I wasn't very expressive. Um, but I think that the creation of this character, Laser Boy, it, it, it reflects my passions being brought out and expressed. Um, I never would be up here today if there, were, if there wasn't that motivation to be a superhero, to stand out and to show people what I've got. And, um, I'm going to show you a picture after this slide. This is two people um, who have just recently become very important to me. One of them has always been very important to me. There on the left, that's Romano Borgobello. He's 85 years old, and he just recently suffered from sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, he's currently battling. He's a trooper. He's, he's, he's battling. Uh, he's also my grandfather. Uh, the man on his l right there, that's Alex. That's the man who came rushing to his aid on the sideline of a soccer field and performed CPR on him for 10 minutes until he survived and lived and came back to life. Um, those are two superheroes. I mean, that's as superhero as it gets, you know. I think um, these movies not only have inspired me to find my own superpower, but have given me the ability to identify who the real superheroes are, you know, because they're out there. And you can be one of them too. Um, I don't want to end this TED Talk on a really dramatic and tear-jerking note because these are superheroes and there's nothing sad about that because they're, they're fighters and they're people that are out there and there's a message that I, if, if there's anything that can be taken from this TED Talk is that Everybody has a superpower. I think that you just have to find it, you know. 
Thank you.